Greetings, royal family. I'm back. Did you miss me? Okay, baby. Let me tell you something. I finally watched the season finale of Basketball Wives. And honey, bravo. Bravo. Evelyn, you got served. OG is the champ, the reigning champ. Um, she did that for little saint. OG, OG did that for little saint. Okay, let's 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 just pick this apart real quick, right? I'm sure you've seen commentary, and a lot of us are reiterating the same things. But um, yeah, you got served, Evelyn. I was I'm totally here for it. This was a great season finale. I was highly entertained. Uh, yeah. So anyway, the episode opens up um, with the. I don't even. How did it even open up? Who cares? Anyway, moving along, right? So. The ladies are defeated, right? I think that's how it started. Evelyn and Shawnee and all them girls, they were in their little villa and Evelyn was talking about the messages or the DMs that OG and um, Chad Ochocinco exchanged between one another. So, you know, Evelyn is, is, is hurt. You know, she's still hurt. Um, so she decides to contact Ocho Cinco. Now, I said this in my last video. Evelyn, this is going to backfire on you. And it seems in the social media streets, it's backfiring on you, sis. It's totally backfiring. But you know what? You started this. You brought this on yourself. So it still behooves me that you're able to contact your abuser, as you refer to him as, and get DMs, or so it appears, get DMs and the ladies are sitting around and Shawnee, she's all excited because you know, she'll take any opportunity to like embarrass or, um, you know, like take shots at OG. So Evelyn's telling the ladies and they're sitting around with anticipation and they're like, Evelyn's like, yeah, I got these receipts. And it seems that she's talking to herself. First of all, did you go to like concierge or your trip planner, uh, you know, and say, do you guys have a printer? Like you really took the time to print these DMs that Chad sent to you so that you can have something tangible to try to embarrass OG with, you know, I laughed. It, it wasn't funny, but I did laugh because I said to myself, Evelyn, you really are the, the, the community that, um, advocates for domestic violence should really tear you a new one because you totally trivialize your entire situation that you were campaigning for after this situation happened with you and Chad, you know? And none of the other ladies, because they're so thirsty for camera time, for attention, and they want to be a part of a clique, that nobody calls her out. Nobody said, Evelyn, like, how were you able to, to get in, chat, in touch with Chad? Not even self-righteous or so it seems Shawnee like you didn't say anything you guys are so pathetic you guys are so pathetic it's ridiculous so she's going through these dms and she's just making fun of the fact that it appears that OG was talking to herself and she was sweating Chad even if she was sweating Chad why is that your concern and you know that Central Park pigeon this is this situation is all your fault because had you not been sweating OG so hard, seeing who she's, uh, li whose picture she's liking or who she's communicating with on Twitter, you wouldn't have had any information to bring back to Evelyn. So that says a lot about you too, because you know what Evelyn went through. So why would you try to like bring that information to her and spin it to make it seem like OG is so wrong? You know, you're texting someone's ex-husband. Anyway, so Shawnee is all, you know, she's like excited, so excited. There was a, the other scene was, um, Shawnee wanted to have a final luncheon with the ladies. So she called Jackie and she basically told Jackie, like, look, I don't want OG to come because, you know, she doesn't want to put herself or the other ladies in danger. There goes those trigger words. Um, so she wants Jackie to tell OG that she doesn't want her to come to the little luncheon or dinner or whatever it was. And, you know, I thought that Jackie would have taken this opportunity to be a little bit more assertive as it pertains to OG. But of course, she didn't. You know, in her confessional, she says, 
you know, why can't you hold the other ladies accountable for their aggression or whatever it is that she said, but you said it in the confessional. Why didn't you say that to Shawnee? I feel like you could have confronted Shawnee and called her on her BS without it being a shouting match or without it being aggressive or violent, but she didn't, you know, and I, and I thought that was real, for lack of a better word, it was cowardly. Like Jackie, come on. Like you say, OG's your friend. You know right is right and wrong is wrong. And you said in your confessional you wasn't really feeling that. So why didn't you call Shawnee on it? Unless she did and, you know, they, they edited that, that part out. So anyway, so she decides to tell OG. And you can hear OG, like, you know, talking her talk from across the villa. And Shawnee's just like, oh, is she, is she, is she being aggressive? Is she, is she doing this? Is she doing that? Anyway, who, God, this episode was a mess. Oh, I forgot about Kristen. Kristen, crybaby Kristen, you know, um, was crying about the fact that Cece walked away and she's getting all emotional and, and the Central Park Pigeon asked her, you know, what you crying for, you know? And uh, <laughs> Kristen was like, because it has to do with my husband. It has to do with my husband. Who cares, right? It's old. Kristen, you're lame. Shawnee, you're, you're even more lame. <sighs> anyway, I'm trying to, you know, get to the juicy stuff, y'all. So I think it was CC, Jackie, and, and OG, they decided, Jackie decided not to attend the little luncheon or what have you. So I think they, um, they had dinner separately and they were doing their things. I think, uh, what's her name? OG and CC and Jackie, they were like at the hot springs and, you know, CC was going off. She was just saying that she, what she would shove the bamboo stick that Evelyn had in her hand up wherever, wherever, like she was going off. So she was, you know, she was reading and people on social media were saying like, why wasn't Cece acting so tough like that in front of Evelyn's face? Like the thing is, Cece wants nothing to do with Evelyn. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like she doesn't want anything to do with her. She knows Evelyn is like violent and, and erratic and immature. Like what is the real argument between the two of them? Like I, I don't know, I don't remember. Like what is the issue that... Evelyn has with Cece. I can see why Cece would have an issue with Evelyn because of the rumor that she started about the type of services that she provided at her business, calling her Ling Ling. I get all of that, but Evelyn, what's your issue with um, Cece for real? Like, and of course, Shawnee's saying nothing. Um, Shawnee and her crew, they um, actually go and visit some of Phoebe's relatives. You know, there were birds there, um, her being a pigeon and all. And... They were, they were just talking and whatever. So Evelyn decides that she wants to confront OG. Shawnee's laughing. Evelyn asked the tour guide, you know, how far is whatever location? Oh, it's right there. So Shawnee and her clan decide to walk up on OG. <laughs> boy, oh boy. And I guess they were, they were going to, her intention was to confront her, to try to embarrass her you know, to try to prove that Chad would never want a woman like her because we really know how Evelyn feels about OG, you know? And OG wasn't having it. You walked right into that embarrassment. Um, <laughs> Evelyn, you are a joke. I swear. It's so pathetic. It really is sad. So, um, she confronts OG and she says, you know, I have exhibit A, B, and C. And Malaysia, like a clown, is holding up these um, printed out messages. And OG was like, oh, hold on. Let me, get my, let me get my phone. All the ladies are crowded around. And, you know, you can see Shawnee. She has this glow on her face. And she's excited. And Kristen's smiling. So when OG gets her phone, the text messages that OG has, which would indicate that Chad and OG exchanged phone numbers, right? Um, was basic, basically just like shut Evelyn's little pseudo evidence down, you know? OG was like, hold on, let me get my phone. Actually, you know, we met in 2011 and the face that Eve they captured <laughs> on film, Evelyn's like, wait, 2011? Because she thought that they're friendship or whatever, um, started in 2013. OG went all the way back to 2011. She's scrolling through the phone. She's like, let me see. Let me look up Chad. It's my guy, my homeboy. I was cracking up 
because OG is not afraid and she has no reason to. She's already we've already seen how Evelyn has embarrassed herself and made herself look like a plum and total fool, right? So OG goes back, she's showing the text messages. You know, it was funny because when Evelyn was taking the um <laughs> taking the the uh papers out of her bag, why was her voice trembling? Like why does her voice always tremble like that? Anyway, so everybody is like standing around. The ladies are looking. They're looking a little bit confused like, ooh, abort mission, abort mission. So she's going through, hey, you know, you're fine. You know what I mean? Are you single? And this was before OG was dating um, Kwame. When, <laughs> when OG was going through the phone and she's like, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. That was, that's, that's what would, <laughs> I can't even. That is what Chad was texting her. Now, here's the thing, right? Here's the question that I have, family. Do you think that one, Evelyn made up these fake DMs and printed it out because she wanted to prove a point? Or two, do you think that she actually contacted Chad and he basically deleted, you know, his messages um, that he sent to OG and to kind of set her up? What do you think? Like, because it does look like he smooth set her up. And my thing is, you guys have been divorced for some time now. His career took a major hit because of the allegations and the situations that happened between them domestically. So do you think he set her up or do you think he was just trying to like, I don't know. What do y'all think? Like, what do y'all think? Anyway, let me tell you something. OG says she has had enough. She said, let me tell you something. You know, you're just mad you know, because Chad wanted me, basically. And quite frankly, Chad wants a, and always has wanted a black woman. You know, and she says, you can act like, you can slick your hair back with gel all you want. You're not black. You know, every time I turn around, you're always N-word this, N-word that, N-word this. You know, don't talk about my daughter. Don't talk about my daughter. When she said that, I said to myself, oh, OG came to kill steal and destroy you Evelyn but you walked into that you were over there with Phoebe and her family with them birds or whatnot and you decided to walk over to where OG was to try to embarrass her and what happened it backfired serves you right serves you right you know and you were laughing it off and you could see them laughing when OG was just reading her down and then they 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 pan to these women in the uh, confessional about OG bringing up the race thing. First of all, I don't like when people say the race thing. You know, come on now, we're we're not talking about race. Like, we're not talking about race. Kristen, her opinion is, you know, Evelyn's uh, text messages were funny because they were big, but OG's text messages were disturbing. Why? Why, why was it disturbing? You guys take every opportunity, all of y'all, all of y'all together can't take down that one OG. Come on, the Nigerian knockout. Then OG starts to say, this is when Evelyn is walking away, right? Evelyn is walking away because you have nothing else to say. Walk away. Where was all of that, you know, that Bronx, you know, attitude? Why weren't you, why did you walk away? Why didn't you try to run down on her like you did um, Cece? Why weren't you in her face like you were toward Jennifer. Yeah, because you know what's up. <laughs> OG, OG pulled up her cover up and said, this is all genetic, honey, giving a, a slow wine tease. I will say this. She has good skin. Not a dent, not a dimple, not a stretch mark, not a blemish. Go on, girl. She said, this is all natural. She said, you could keep buying fake, you know, fake breasts, Keep getting a fake, you know, behind, whatever she said. She said, this is all natural, all natural. And you know what? When she got in the car, she drove off. Of course, Shawnee was like, you know, Jesus loves you, OG. And then, of course, Kristen is laughing. Don't bring Jesus Christos into this, okay? Jesus don't have nothing to do with this mess and this madness that you are conjuring up, Shawnee. Like, at that point, why didn't you say that to her when she was out of the car? You said this when she got in the car and was driving away. Typical punk move. And OG, quick with the comeback, OG's like, I know. I know Jesus loved me. That's why I will always persevere. 
Bravo. Bravo, young lady. OG held her own. And I think Evelyn says, like, you know, I've always been proud of being Afro-Latina. Okay, let me, let me just stop. I never heard you mention the word Afro-Latina. I never heard you say anything as far as black women are concerned. You don't advocate for black women. Every time I hear you talking about your ethnicity, it's always Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican from the Bronx, Puerto Rican from the Bronx. So don't try to like talk about your Afro-Latina. That, that term didn't even become widely popular until Amara La Negra from um, Love & Hip Hop Miami started claiming that and proclaiming it and letting everybody know that she is Afro-Latina and she makes no apologies about it. So Evelyn, shut up. Just shut up. This episode was amazing. And I love the fact that OG stood on her own and she gave Evelyn a taste of her very own medicine. So you can dish it, Evelyn, but you can't take it. And I told you, I said it, guys, in my last video, my last Basketball Wives review, this is going to backfire. How is it that you are able to have contact with your abuser? I don't understand that. That seems a little bit sick and twisted. And you will go so far to try to embarrass OG that you will reach out to Chad in this situation. You called her, you called OG dirty. You said that she was, you know, shaking her dirty, you know, behind. Why is dirty? What's dirty about OG? You better be very careful, Evelyn girl. You are, the people are not feeling you, honey. I know there were petitions to, um, to cancel basketball wives, but they are coming back for another season. The season was renewed. I do feel like Shawnee needs to be either not on the show or she should um, have her name removed as executive producer because she is one of the executive producers. So I just don't understand why her her presence or her name holds so much weight as it become as it pertains to like the franchise. You know, um, I saw the review the preview for the reunion, and you can see Evelyn crying like you know for her to bring up my abuser. Girl, Phoebe brought up your abuser. Phoebe was the one that told you in the store that Chad and her were communicating. So why are you not mad at Phoebe? Evelyn, you in danger, girl, because these, these women out here are not feeling you at all. And like I said, you did this to yourself. Um, OG is, has had to film on another completely different set than the ladies because they were concerned about their safety. No, you just don't want her story to be told. You don't want her to tell her story. Um, you don't want her to further embarrass you because you got served, Evelyn. You got served. And good for you, OG. Good for sticking up for yourself. Good for standing firm and not being intimidated because trust me, those ladies are not a threat to you. They want to think that they're a threat, but they're not a threat. And they got exactly what they were looking for. Shawnee, <clears throat> You're gross. Um, I did hear that Shaq was sticking up for her or something like that. I, I didn't even dive into that. If you know, put it in the comments and let me know. But there's not much to say about this episode other than OG is in charge of the girls. Okay? Not Shawnee. Certainly not Evelyn. OG is in charge of the girls. So we will be back. Well, I will be back. Um, for the review um, of the reunion. This looks like it's going to be interesting. It's a shame that like they weren't all able to film on the same stage. It just further like proves that you guys are a bunch of cowards and you can dish it, but you can't take it. Malaysia, mm, mm, mm. disappointed in you, girl. Now you didn't have to pick sides, but right is right and wrong is wrong. And I'm curious to see what she has to say um, about her little storyline. And by, let me tell Byron is probably going to be so done with Malaysia. He's already done with Kristen. As far as Byron is concerned with his with Thomas, I think that Byron and Thomas are good. I just think that he wants no parts of Kristen, rightfully so. I don't think that there's static anymore, really, between Thomas and um, Byron. If you know different, put it in the comments and let me know. Royal family, this was fun. Shout out to OG. OG is in charge of the girls. 
I love you for watching. Be sure to thumbs up this video. Um, if it's the first time that you're here, welcome. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, notification bell, so that you can get notified whenever I upload. Be aggressive. Be -E aggressive. Be -E -A -G -G -R -E -S -S -I -V -E aggressive. Until next time, peace.